All right. Hello, Evelings. We're battling troll internet today uh, to try to get this uh, done, uh, this video that I have been dreaming up. Now, CCP just released a video called How to Fit Your Ship or something like that for Eve Academy. And I was like, gosh darn it, like two seconds before I was going to do this. Um, like I've mentioned in previous videos, fitting ships is one of my favorite things. Now, this is for, uh, we're going to talk about how to fit a PVE ship for doing basic PVE stuff. We're talking anomalies or we're talking mission running, that kind of thing. We're going to go through the steps that I think you should at least start with and consider before fitting ships that are eventually going to come through my shit fit roundups. Um, so here's how I would approach it as a newer player. Okay. First of all, there's a lot in EVE. Okay. So this video assumes a certain level of knowledge of a couple of different things. Um, if you don't know, about shield tanking versus armor tanking. Go, I'll leave links in the description to the videos where I talk about those two things in detail so that you can learn about those. You also need to kind of know the various weapon systems that you will be dealing with, depending on what part of space you start in and um, what faction ships you enjoy. The weapon systems are going to vary, not by that much, but by enough that you kind of need to know. For example, I'm big into blasters because um, that's just how it is. So I know that if I load up blasters um, and I'm putting blasters up here, then one way to increase the damage of blasters is a thing called a magnetic field stabilizer. All right. So every weapon system has a type of boosty thingy that goes along with it. Okay. So in the case of blasters, it's this, right? And if you right click and show info, uh, you're going to have to do a little bit of futzing around. Grants a bonus to the firing rate and damage of hybrid turrets. And I know blasters are hybrid. So... There's a little bit of research on your own uh, to do in that. I have uh, many videos that will probably help you out with that kind of thing. I will leave the, uh, just a link to the few most helpful down in the description so that I'm not just flooding it with videos and everybody's like blah, 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 drowning in videos, okay? So the first thing that we have to consider when we fit a ship for PVE is what are its bonuses, okay? So you can find that by loading this. This is the ship fitting window. We're going to do all of this in the EVE in the game, all right, because there are other fitting tools out there, and there are some of them that are very in depth and they're super awesome. But we're just going to do it in here because you know that's just where we are. Okay, I'm going to fit up a vexer because I know vexers uh, pretty well. Um, so if you type in your hull that you want to fit, the vexer, and then you click on this, it says simulate the ship. Now you've got a blank ghost vexer here, and you can just start doing whatever you want to this. You're going to go into hardware tab next. This is where you find all the parts you're going to put on this. Now, the first thing I want you to do is hover on the eye here. This will tell you the name of the ship, which is cool. And then it'll tell you for every level of Galente Cruiser, in the case of the Vexer, it'll be different on every ship. Um, uh, per skill level of Galente Cruiser you have, you get bonuses to the following things. Medium hybrid turret damage, now, this probably means it's a good idea to put medium hybrid turrets on this. However, there are certainly valid fits that don't have that, but for now, we're going to stick to the rule that if it's got a bonus for it, you should probably use it. Um, not 100% true. Don't troll me. Don't flame me in the comments, bro. Don't at me. Just listen. 10% bonus to drone hit points, damage, and the always troll mining yield bonus, which... Don't mine in a Vexor, please. That's just a, a left, leftover from a from a different era of Eve when there weren't specific ships uh, for gathering resources and you just did it in whatever was hanging around um, in your hangars. And so the Vexor was a little drone miner. Isn't cute? Uh, so the hit points and damage is what we're really going to focus on. So if we fit, if we put drones on this ship and if we put medium hybrid turrets on it, we're already ahead of the game, okay? So how do we figure out how to do that? Well... We can go into here and hit, if you hit the collapse, I've been messing around with my group. So if you hit collapse, you can collapse them all. And then uh, you can go and look for turrets and launchers. We're going to start with the guns, okay? And all these little subcategories here, we can go to hybrid turrets. And then we can also just go to, um, there's two different kinds. There's rail guns and blasters, all right? Most weapon systems and maybe all weapon systems have a short range and a long range version of that weapon system. Just learn what that is um, by kind of looking at what the guns do. So if you go in here and you right click on heavy neutron blaster and show info, you'll go to the attributes and it'll say, where is it? Here we go. Um, nope, that's not it. You'd, you'd think that uh, optimum range would be near accuracy falloff since uh, here. 
3,600 meters, okay? So if you don't know whether that's short or long, go into the rail guns, right click a rail gun, show the info on the rail gun, and optimal range 24. So in the case of hybrid turrets, the rail guns are the long range ones, and the blasters are the short range ones. I prefer blasters for almost everything at this point in my EVE life. I just like being up close and it's a lot more DPS when you're in close. You just have to be a little more careful. So I am going to go into medium blasters and this is where it's going to take a little bit of time to figure stuff out. So um, there's a bunch of text here. We're going to talk about the blasters and hopefully it's somewhat applicable to other weapon systems as well. Um, the blasters... There are three kinds of, 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 of blasters. There's electron blasters, ion blasters, and neutron blasters. If you ever want to see what the difference between all these things are, you right-click it, push compare, drag some buddies down in there, and then I suggest that you uh, check this only show attributes that differ because we don't care about what's the same, really, honestly. So that way you can kind of see what's different. So if I click like damage modifier, let me open this up a little bit. If I click damage modifier, you can see that the neutron blaster's damage modifier is huge. That means it's multiplying your damage, uh, the ammo damage by this much and all this good stuff. Okay, so the electrons, I remember the blasters because they're in alphabetical order. Electrons are the weakest, then the ion, then the neutron. But this comes at a trade-off, okay? It's not just like neutron blasters are the best because they do the most damages, LOLs. You have to also take into consideration things like power grid usage, right? The heavy electron blasters, they don't use up a lot of your ship's power grid. Okay, um, and then the ions use a bit more and the neutrons. So you're paying for that damage increase with power grid usage. The compare window is absolutely your best friend when you're fitting a ship. So make sure you right click on stuff, put it in the compare window, check it out, check how it differs and what it can do and all that stuff. And especially price is a good thing too. In the case of the blasters, especially the tech ones, it doesn't matter that much. But as you get into different things, it's going to matter quite a bit. Okay, so my next tip is uh, look up here at how many turret hard points you can fit. That's how many turrets you can put on your ship. Over here is the launcher hard points for more missile-based ships. Some ships have a mix of both of these things, and you can put uh, turrets and launchers on the same ship, which is kind of fun. Um, you can do one or the other or whatever. This can have up to four guns. So guess what? We're going to put four guns on it. And I'm going to put the biggest, highest tech gun I can use. Now, how do you know what the highest tech gun you can use? If you're just starting the game, it's meta. I have a whole video on meta modules and why tech one modules suck 95% of the time. I got called out in another video because, and, and they were right, I didn't mention that tech one rigs are totally okay. They get the Ares Gaming stamp of approval because tech two rigs are usually insanely expensive compared to the tech one and rigs do not have a meta variant. There's nothing usually, I don't think there's ever anything in between a tech one rig and a tech two rig. But with guns, mid slot stuff, bottom slot stuff, which is technically called your lows. Um, there is almost always meta variant. So let's talk about what that is. So let's 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 click on uh, heavy electron blaster. We're going to show info on the blaster. We're going to go to variations. All right. So this is all the heavy electron blaster variations there are. Heavy electron blaster one is the tech one variant for the blaster. All right. And so anything else that's under that, that's got more extra adjectives or more extra nouns or whatever after it is something called a meta module. And they typically get better as they go down. Then we get to tech two stuff, which usually requires a decent amount of skills to be able to use. So it takes a while to train. Storyline and faction, we're not going to talk about today. Those are for advanced fittings and things like that. But if you go down here to the modal electron particle accelerator one, this is going to just be just plain better than the tech one version and the skills to use it. Let's check it out. So let's check out the skills to use this requirements. It needs medium hybrid turret one in order to use this and like gunnery three. So this is what kind of what this looks like. If we go to this one, which is like way better and go to the requirements, it's exactly the same. So if possible, always try to use the meta version of something. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to actually just drag it right from here. I could find this in the list over here, but like, I don't know why bother. And then shift left click and you can copy that gun four times. Okay. And actually I don't want electron blasters though. I want to just put the biggest one I can on. So I'm going to do neutron blasters. Now I can use tech two, but I'm going to do it. Actually, I'll do it with tech twos. So I want you to put the biggest one that you can skillfully use in here for now. We will adjust this later. Now, this is already a huge problem on this ship, but we'll, we'll deal with this later. It's all part of the thing. Okay. So fit 
the biggest weapon systems you can. And in the case of a Vexor, this also includes uh, your drones. And so drones are kind of complex. I'm going to put um, my usual loadout on the Vexor when I'm in Galente space. Um, is this. Um, that per perfectly fits in my drone bay. And then I'm going to put on the highest damage loadout, which is this. All right. So you can tell your boat, simulated boat, like which drones you're using here, right? You're using two heavies, two mediums, and a light, which is the highest DPS you can get off of a Vexor uh, for drone loadout. Not necessarily the one you'll always use because, you know, this won't be too good against frigate stuff. Only your Hornet will probably really be able to hit them very well. Anyway, once you fit your weapon system, the biggest... Biggest, highest you can do, all right? We will be downgrading this later if we need to, but for now, we're just going to pop it on there. It's going to be huge. And now we need to decide how to tank ourselves, all right? So um, if we want to do an armor tank or a shield tank, this is where we decide that. The Vexor is kind of an interesting ship because I, there's arguments for both a shield and an armor tank. We're going to armor tank this because that's typically the way it's going to go. Um, you have more armor hit points in general, so typically you can tell what kind of tank a ship wants because it's either bonused for it, not the case in the Vexor here, or you, it has like just plain more hit points in that category, right? Like a shield tank does work very well on this, but you wouldn't really necessarily know it by looking at it. Um, it's got almost, uh, you know, double the armor hit points than the shield, so we're probably going to armor tank it. Now, after you watch the armor tank video, you'll know that armor tanks go in the low slots. And the way we tank for PvE is very specific. And I feel very strongly about this. So sorry if I use some, some tense language. But in PvE, all of your freaking tank needs to come from your resists and your armor repairer. Assuming it's an armor tank. If it's a shield tank, it needs to come from your resist and your shield repairer or your passive shield regen. We'll talk about that later. But if you're fitting an armor tank, it all needs to come from resistances and armor repairer. So the first thing we're going to do is slap an armor repairer on this. And we're just going to literally type in armor repairer. Okay. This is um, a module that repairs your armor as it cycles. And... Um, it will repair a certain amount and you can go to this drop down tab and find out what that is. So 41 hit points a second, this will repair. Now, as a general rule, the biggest armor repairer that can fit on the ship you're flying is generally a good target for very general mission stuff, right? There is definitely harder stuff that you can take on with bigger repairers or double repairers or whatever other shenanigans you can cook up. But for the most part, in general, for dead sites, for anomalies, for mission stuff, this is a sort of a number you're shooting for, right? Especially if you're looking for a passive shield tank, right? This is the number you're shooting for. So for general mission stuff, general use, general beginner use, you won't need more than one armor repairer, more than one shield booster. And if you are choosing to passive shield tank, then you're shooting for some number around what one armor repairer or one shield booster would give you, okay? As a general rule, you should be okay in, in stuff that you're running. So in a smaller ship like a frigate, the armor repairer won't do as much, so you're shooting for a lower number because you can only fit a small one on there. And then on a bigger ship like a battlecruiser or battleship or something like that, um, you might be shooting for a bigger number with your passive shield tanks. But this, this is generally a decent benchmark, okay? So you've got your medium armor repairer down here. And the second thing I want you to do on literally almost every ship you ever make is just put a damage control on it, okay? Just pretend like you have one less low slot. Um, when you're a beginner, this will save your bacon uh, many times because if you get into a situation that's just too hard, this the the amount of resist this thing gives you across the board, um, like watch, okay, it's off. When I turn it on, everything here is just going to jump up, everything. It will give you more time to decide what to do, to warp out, and might save your ship um, it pretty, pretty, pretty decent, right? And it's, it's pretty good no matter what you're doing. Um, it, when you get to advanced stuff, sometimes you don't pop damage controls on. I like to say, just put it on everything. Uh, it's just a darn fine module. And, um, at the cost of a, of one low slot, it's not too shabby. Okay. So this is what I would do at first. Now, y if you look at our armor resists on our ship so far, We've got a really low explosive damage resistance. Now, the thing about this is it looks bad, right? Like if somebody shoots you with explosive, like that's no bueno, and you're going to take a bunch of damage. But we might not ever come across anybody in this ship that deals explosive damage. And in PvE, you're usually fighting in certain areas of space. You're usually fighting certain enemies from certain factions. And sometimes they just don't even deal explosive damage. 
So on a PvE ship, sometimes I don't even plug the damage hole that armor uh, tanks always have in the explosives because if you know what missions you're running and you know what kind of stuff you're coming up against, this might never really be an issue. Um, I know that um, in Galente space, I'm going to take on a lot of this kind of stuff. Um, but, you know, whatever. Now, here's where we're going to talk uh, about... Um, what we want to do next. So these these are the parts of our ship that we are sure of, all right? For now. For now. Slap on the biggest darn guns you've got. Put some stuff down here. And then um and then you you need to figure out how to fill fill out the rest of your ship, okay? So how do we do that? Well, propulsion mod seems like a good idea to me, right? Either an afterburner or a micro warp drive so you can kind of get around. Um I recommend micro warp drives uh because they're faster and um especially with blasters if you can't get in on your stuff fast enough and deal damage to it then what's the point of having blasters so i'm going to do micro warp drive on here and oh this is one thing i forgot to mention you want to filter by remaining resources don't filter by total resources that makes no sense all right so if you filter by remaining resources it'll tell you what you can put on here um, that's left uh, on your power grid now we're actually going to super ignore this in a second but uh for starters that's a good thing to do so uh, this will allow me, I have enough space for a 5MN micro warp drive of, of varying types. Remember, here's the tech one, here's all the metas, and then here's the tech two. Um, so if I put a 5MN on, it makes my maximum navigation speed go up to 436 from 243. Now that's not very fast. In EVE, you'll learn what fast is, and that's not very fast. But what that means is I'm not, I don't have enough power grid to fit the next bigger one. So I'm going to go grab it here. I'm going to untick this so I can get in here. And I want a 50 MN. So there's 5 MN, 50 MN, 500 MN. I'm going to go for the 50. Um, and I'm going to use one of the meta kinds. I'm not going to use the compact. I'm going to use um, the restrained, which is a really good one. Um, so then this will allow me to go 1600 meters per second. A lot better. I can close on my targets a lot easier that way. Okay, so the next thing that we want to do on here, now now you'll notice our power grid's flashing, right? That's no good, but we'll deal with that in a little bit. There's a couple ways to solve those problems. The next thing we have to do is decide, as you get into bigger and bigger ships, you have to decide how you're going to deal with frigates. Because as the, as the weapon systems get bigger, they get slower and it's really hard to hit stuff. So if you have a short-range weapon system, uh, the easiest thing to slap on to solve that problem is a web. All right, so stasis web of fire slows your targets down, and then you can hit them with blasters. I like to put one of these on here no matter what, but your hornets, your light drones, whatever light drones you load up, will deal with frigates as well. So, you know, the web is, is secondary. It'll help you apply your blasters a little bit better, and you can do that. So those these are the parts that we're kind of sure of, right? We're like, okay, we need some way to, like, tank damage. Uh, we need some way to deal damage. We need some way to get around, and maybe a little bit of utility over here. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at our capacitor, which is a hot mess. Here, I have a big video on capacitor stabilizing too, um, and my thoughts on it. There are lots of thoughts on it, but those are mine, and you can't take them from me. So I'm going to, I'm going to put everything like I'm not firing it. This is how you turn it off so that your, your simulation thinks, hey, he's not firing this stuff. It's fine. And then we look at our capacitor. Now, with just our tank mod on, our, our armor repairer in this case. I might fit more tank uh, later, but with just this on, we deplete our capacitor in two minutes and 15 seconds, which that's not amazing. I, I shoot for cap total cap stability with just my tank mods on. That's my just how I do it. We can solve this in a couple different ways. We have two empty mid slots and batteries go in the mid. Um, and we have to leave our thing off because... Um, you know, and you can tell which kind of battery, right? So if I if I hover on large cap battery two, you'll notice my power grid goes to negative 583. So that's like, there's no way we're going to be able to fit this on here. We just look for one, like that looks reasonable, right? So it's a medium ship, it's a cruiser. So it's probably going to take a medium battery. So we're going to stick a medium battery on here and, and look at our capacitor. It goes from negative uh, 77 to negative 24. So we need one more thing on here probably to take it up. And we're just going to do um, a cap recharger. There, now we are stable. Cap recharger also goes in the mids. Um, so there that is, all right? So we are now cap stable. That means we can keep our, our armor repair going forever, unless we're being, you know, neutered by some sort of uh, energy neutralizer drains your capacitor, but depends on if you run into that or not. 
Um, and we can keep that going forever, right? That gives you plenty of time to keep that on while you're thinking about what to do, while you're deciding whether to warp out, uh, just generally like keeping yourself alive, okay? Now we won't be cap stable once we turn all this other stuff on, but that's totally fine. Okay, so now we have three low slots left over. Things that go in the low slots include more armor tank and damagey stuff. So first things first, um, if you watched my armor tank video, like you should have paused this and gone to watch it because I think it's really cool and I'll link it in the description and it talks about armor tanks and also love and also, um, you know, how to make Julian fries. But if we go over here, we have a lot of uh, plates. Now these plates are what I was warning you about earlier, where this will bump up your total armor and it looks so good. You're like, oh yeah, look at all that armor I've got. Oh, 4,000. Oh, look at that. If I turn it off, I've only got 12,000 effective hit points. And if I turn it on, I've got 15. Oh yeah, it feels so good. Don't do it. Okay. For PVP, yeah. But for PVE, nah. Okay. So we're going to ignore all these plates, even though they're awesome for certain things, but they're not good for this. What we're going to shoot for then, and you can use your little categories to help you out. If you go to um, Holland Armor, there are different categories under here. Damage controls even get their own category because they're awesome. Um, we're going to go for Energized Armor Resistance Membranes. Okay, now these are just straight up um, resistance boosters, passive resistance boosters. In fact, they don't you don't have to turn them on. They just happen. And we are going to actually just go for a multi-spectrum. Now, I, I, I know that... Um, uh, I just said that, you know, we don't really need to worry about this resist over here necessarily. But if I don't do this, this, this energized membrane two, and I try to go for like, um, I try to get my kinetic up and my thermal up, that's great and all, but that's going to take two of my low slots. And that's just too much for me to give up right now. So I, I'm, I'm going to want a little bit more resist. I know this from experience that this is probably a decent way to go, right? 56, 56, and it only takes one slot versus 66, 66 and two slots. And I'm focusing on these two because I'm in Galente space, all right? If you're in a different type of space and you're flying a different ship, you're going to uh, prioritize different resistances, but this is what I prioritize on this one. And that's kind of a learning thing that you just kind of have to know. A lot of people have it linked in their bios. Actually, they have like damage to deal, damage to resist for each type of uh, faction in the game. So you can kind of do a little research that way if you go bio surfing. Um, and now I've got what I think is going to be a decent enough tank for running level two missions, level three missions in this thing, some Serpentis narcotics warehouses, any anomaly I want. So I'm going to pop some damage in here so I can do all that faster. So the first thing we got to do is because this is a drone boat, we're going to pop the drone damage amplifier into it. I'm going to use tech two because I can, and it's going to go down there. And then we are going to um, load up our guns with ammo because until they're loaded with ammo and turned on, they don't actually register any DPS. So let's take a look at our DPS with just the drone. If I turn it off, I'm down to 290. If I turn it on, I'm at 350. So I think 60 DPS is definitely a good um, boost for that, right? If I show info on the blasters, I can go to the used with tab. And this tells you all the stuff that you can load into it. Okay, all the different Tech 1 ammos, the faction ammo, which is what you want to use. I, I don't know. Tech 1, again, Tech 1 stuff, um, they, 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 there's no meta of ammo, but the faction stuff is usually cheap enough that it's just plain better. So, like, you please use faction ammo. Um, tech 1 ammo is only there for making faction ammo. <laughs> I'm just going to throw that out there. I can use the Tech 2 ammos in here. So I'm going to, I'm going to load Void because I know from experience. And again... Um, you know, if you, if you don't know what, like what the difference between the ammos is, here's your buddy, the compare window, right? This is your best friend, except for Kyle. He's like a really good friend and he's always there when you need him. But the compare window is your second best friend. Okay. So you can pop all the little ammos in. You can see the range bonuses that they give you. You can see the damages that they do. Um, and sort of compare all that and the capacitor needs. So there's actually capacitor bonuses too. So the lead takes almost no capacitor to shoot your guns. And so anyway, I've loaded it up. Now I can see my DPS with my blasters going 670. That's impressive. So I am going to try one thing first. I'm going to shift click this over, see what happens when I put a second DDA on. I go up to 732 with, with two DDAs. What if I use a magnetic field stabilizer? 
I go up to 743. So it's better, at least damage total damage-wise, it's better to have one of these and one of these. Now, in practice, that's probably not 100% true uh, because with two damage uh, with two uh, drone damage amps, maybe your drones get in there and do more damage more often than your blasters because you're busy flying around to new targets and your blasters aren't applying damage 100% of the time. In a perfect world, if you applied 100% of the time blaster damage and 100% of the time drone damage, this would be the best loadout. I'm going to actually say that I think two DDAs is probably the best choice here. Now, whoopsie doodle McNoodles, we have all kinds of problems here. Um, we have uh, a flashing uh, CPU and a really, really overloaded power grid here. So now it's time to solve those problems. There are two places, three places to solve fitting problems on your ship when stuff just don't fit. One of them is there's lots of low slot stuff um, that will, will handle your problems. Um, but we don't have any more low slots left. And especially on an armor tank, your low slots are mostly going towards the tank. Um, and so there's not a lot of room to solve fit problems here. The second place we can solve fitting problems is over here in the rigs. There is, let's sort this. Um, what is it called? Is it called, I actually don't know what the, it must be engineering rigs, right? Okay, so in here, there is a processor overclocking unit ancillary current router, and those are the two uh, biggest ones that solve your, your fitting problems over there. Um, so let's let's solve our, our CPU issue. Um, oh, I'm sorry, there are three ways to solve. We can also turn one of our things into meta. Uh, in the case of like my Tech 2 stasis web, like I know that if I downgrade this to meta, especially the compact version, I can solve my fitting problems in the CPU right away. So if I go to variations on that and I put in, uh, let's try the enduring one first. Yep, so the enduring one is better for our cap anyway and we don't need the compact one because this this enduring one solves our problems. Compact ones take up even less space. So, but I don't need that much more space, right? I need, I don't need that much. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna put the enduring one on there. Okay, so that solves my CPU. Can I solve my flashing power grid with just current routers? Let's go for the tech two of this. And we're going to put a tech one as well. Mm -hmm. So between a tech one and a tech two, I can solve my flashing power grid. However, if you look at the cost of your ship, then you'll notice that the medium ans ancillary current router two costs double what the ship itself costs. Probably not a good solution for beginners. All right. So we're going to cut this and we are going to tackle our problem in a different way. Um, because even if I put three of these in, don't think that'll get me there. Oh, it does get me there. But at the cost of every one of my rig slots, right? Like I could be using these to do other things. So we're going to come in and do this. So let's take, what we do is we mouse over things in our build and we see what is taking up the most space in our power grid. It'll light up uh, like a big red. So we find that all of our power grid is coming from our armor repairer, our uh, micro warp drive, and our guns. Now, remember when I fit the guns at the very beginning, it could already see it was going to be a huge problem because it filled up almost all my power grid with nothing else on the ship. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to unload the ammo and we're going to downgrade these to ion blasters instead. Now, actually, that won't be under variations. We're going to have to go find them because remember we talked about how, yeah, neutron blasters are great and all, but they take up a ton of uh, power grid. So let's see if ions solve our problem. I don't know if they will. This This thing drives me nuts. There we go. So we're close. We could do ions with one ancillary rig, right? And I think that's probably a decent solution, right? We're using only one rig slot. We've downgraded to a gun. It's got slightly less range, does a little bit less damage, right? What kind of damage are we doing here? Um, used with void, right? So we're down, you know, probably like 30 DPS from where we were before, but we can actually fit it and it doesn't cost an arm and a leg. So... Um, this is a decent fit so far. I think this will do pretty well. Now we have two rig slots left. Rigs can do almost anything that every other slot can do. Um, so you can fix capacitor problems over here. You can fix fitting problems. You can have more damage. There's so much utility in the rig slots. So using just one to fix our fitting problem is probably pretty good. And actually, if we did something like this, and if we maybe downloaded or downgraded to the compact armor wrap, See, so we could even do something like that, right? You've got to fudge the fit until it fits. 
now we've got all three of our rigs free for shenanigans of uh, other types. So we're gonna grab, we're gonna jump into our rigs and talk about what we can do in here. So once you've played Eve for a while, you kind of know what the deficit of your ship is, right? This is a good speed for this, so I don't need to make it faster over here. Um, you know, I fixed my capacitor problems for the most part. Like I'm still unstable if I'm shooting everything and firing my micro warp drive all over the place, but you know, I'm stable uh, with just my reparon, so we don't need that. Um, and so I guess the, the two things we could do here, uh, we could give ourselves a little bit more damage from our guns. We could make our repper a little bit better since we downgraded to the compact version. I don't know. Um, because there's, a, there's a rig, uh, if you go under armor rigs, there's a rig called a nano pump, um, which looks pretty good, right? That'll bring it up to, to 40 hit points a second. So 35 without it, 40, and it still fits, right? This costs a little bit of power grid. So it says... Uh, is designed to increase the ship's armor repair repair amount at the expense of increased power grid need. Uh, so the drawbacks of fitting it can be uh, reduced or mitigated by training the armor rigging skill. So this combination here uh, is actually about the same. It's the same as a Tech 2 armor repairer, but it fits. So that's good. We're going to do that. And then we're going to give ourselves some, if we go to like the you know hybrid weapon rigs, we can like if we mouse over, we can kind of see what they do, right? This this takes more power, so we've got the burst aerator and the collision accelerator, which both increase our DPS by a pretty decent chunk here. By you know the the burst aerator especially seems good. It also affects our cap, but again, you know we we're pretty good on cap, so we're gonna do that. And then we have to fix our power grid again, so we can go to a compact MWD. We could downgrade our turrets again, but you know, again, this is something you kind of got to fool around with. So the compact one doesn't really solve our problems. I'm going to go back to the restrained. So I guess, I guess our last slot probably goes to an ancillary current router. And then we're fixed, right? So the only thing you got to do is remember to put some ammo in your cargo hold. Usually for PVE stuff, you can just slap an arbitrary amount. Wow, that's too much. How about like 5,000? And then if you run out, you can go get more, right? Uh, for PVE, or sorry, for PVP, you usually don't keep that much ammo in your hold because you, you don't know how long your ship's going to be alive. But for PVE stuff, you can just load, I don't know, see how much your guns take. So 120 each. So 480 for a full rack if you fire through the whole thing. So maybe you, I don't know, you'll, you'll get the feel for how much ammo to put in there. Um, and this is a very solid... PVE Vexor build that we, I kind of talked through. Um, I hope that makes sense. I will link more videos in the description. Now, before I go, now we've got this fit up. We want to save it. I probably have too many fittings, but we're going to do, we're just going to call it uh, Eve Basics Vexor thingy. All right. And then you can save that fit. And then under hulls and fits, I have too many. Don't look directly at my Vexor fittings. Uh, uh, Eve basics thing. Uh, alphabetizing is hard. Then you can load that fit up. Now it won't load up with the ammo in the guns. So if you want to check your DPS, you got to like reload the ammo into the guns for the simulation. Um, and then you can kind of futz around with it more from here. So here are the things that I think you should do in order. Try to remember this. I'll write it down for you. And I think it's a decent guideline. Again, don't flame me. This isn't the opinion of everyone on EVE Online. It's just my opinion. The first thing you should do is put the biggest darn weapon system you can tra have trained to be able to fire onto your ship and put as many guns as you can or as many missile launchers or whatever. That's number one. Number two, fit some kind of tank that is looks respectable in the resists and has enough um, enough of an HP per second that you can stay alive. And then once you have a respectable weapon system, respectable tank, put on some kind of propulsion mod so you can get around at a reasonable rate so you're not slowly going to the acceleration gates and the loot and the guys. Just put something on that makes you go fast. You'll learn what that is as you experiment around. And then... Uh, solve your fitting issues, solve your capacitor issues. I don't have any on this ship. I can run literally everything on this forever. Um, but you'll have to solve this with uh, different mods. Usually you're going to find them in the um, uh, engineering equipment is where all that stuff is. Like um, the 
capacitor flux coils and all that and the batteries and the capacitor rechargers there's all kinds of ways to solve these kinds of problems and then um and then fill in the rest of it with damage and just play around and futz around okay so this is um this is the way that I would fit a PVE ship for general use. I know there's high-end PVE stuff that does things very differently, but if you're just going out there with a ship, man, uh, just fit it up kind of like this, uh, and you won't end up in one of my shit fit videos. Watch a shit fit video if you want to see people who don't know how to fit PVE ships. Um, these come through Corp Chat all the time. Do you think this ship is good enough? Well, let's see. The answer is... Oh, I deleted all my ship fits because I'm starting ship fit four and I was running out of things. <laughs> oh God. Um, but they come through with just the weirdest amount of things on them. Focus on your damage, focus on your tank, fix your capacitor, fix your fitting problems. And, um, and that'll be good. All right. So thanks for watching. This was a long one. Um, I, I really appreciate uh, you watching this next video is going to be PVP Vexor fits uh, straight from the oven. Uh, so yeah, I'll see you then. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like and or subscribe if you made it this far in the video or even if you didn't make it this far in the video, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next Aries Gaming. Bye.